Morning, TJ. Hey, Bonham. Um, we'd like to welcome you to today's episode. And the whole idea around today is that we're hosting um, TJ. That's how we best know him. His official yeah. name, of course, is Tafaze. But the whole idea around having him, he's been one of the men whom, when I've been around, I've always had quite insightful encounters, not because of perhaps the deep things that he says or anything like that, just because of his willingness to share his persona. He does not get into a room and shrinks into the corner. He's always available for you if you want to, to speak to. So that is one of the reasons why we decided to get in touch with him. And we are grateful, of course, that he accepted um, the call um, to come and share with us some of the things that we're going to speak about. So I would like to welcome um, TJ and thank you for coming through. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me, Bonga. It's really great to be here and um, I love what you guys are doing on your channel. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Um, so um, as you may have seen the other episodes, uh, for those people who are perhaps watching this and haven't watched other ones, um, there's a set of questions that, of course, we will put through to TJ um, with the idea of him sharing with us um, what are uh, his ways, perhaps, if I can put it that way, of put, of setting up his life. And we will, of course, share a bit of a bio um, in the introduction of the, of the episode. So um, let's leave that for now. Um, so one of the questions that perhaps we had to start with um, TJ is, around, is along the lines of principles, is, uh, is along the lines of quality of values, other people will call them. But just some of the major things or the major tenets that you have set up your life in, if you do not mind just sharing perhaps on a few of them, and then we will take it from there. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm in the very fortunate position that I was raised in, in a home where principles really are everything. Um, they guided my upbringing, they guided, you know, everything from decision making to the kinds of friendships I got into, not to say all of my choices and <laughs> friends were, were always perfect or anything, but it was always at the back of my mind, you know, mm -hmm. principle, principle, because one of the things that I was taught even from an early age in the language in which I understood was that principle, everything else can change in life, but principles are those things that don't actually shift. Mm -hmm. So you can't cheat them, you can't cheat principles. So yeah, I think all of that translated then into my adult life, um, the choices that I made, the bigger decisions about my life, and they continue even now to, to help me as I go through life. Cool, cool. Um, do you have any particular individual call it even if you just pick us a few of those principles that you mm. would like to share with us um for everyone who's watching today yeah i think one of the biggest ones is is just around valuing people you know um people matter not only to other people but they matter principally to god you know um we experience God through people, we experience God through our relationships, through the people close to us, even through strangers. So people are everything and how we treat people, I think has a big part to play in where we find ourselves in life. You talk about values like kindness, generosity. I appreciate even the, you know, the intro that you gave about me that I, share a bit of myself with people that I interact with. I think for me, that all comes back to the fact that mm -hmm. I, I, I like, I hope that every time that I interact with a person, whether it's somebody close to me or somebody maybe that I'm only going to meet once and never again, that some positive aspect of me okay. rubs off on them. So I think of all the principles that I would say uh, guides my life. Um, yeah, people valuing people, valuing what they have to say, valuing listening to people as well. It's not always about you giving out stuff to people and you know making yourself heard, but it's also about just listening, um, and that extends to being teachable. Do you believe that you're the type of person that? can learn things from other people. You might be opinionated, you might have strong views, but are you teachable? Uh, if you interact with a person and 
they totally mess up everything you believed you knew <laughs> you know can you learn something from people mm -hmm. so yeah everything i think any principle that i have in my life it's always about, comes back to the root which is which is to do with people cool cool thank you yeah. i like i like that you mentioned that because as men we tend to get into the circles that we get into with the idea of leaving something there of yeah. sharing yourself more than getting in there to listen to other people so exactly um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that and finding yeah. that these conversations for the most part of them that i've been doing now i feel like they are a note to myself more than the people perhaps who may be preparing them for so i'm actually enjoying and yeah. sharing that part as well we will come yeah. back on to some of the things that you've touched on if you can just touch on the one around how you perhaps call it manage your time i know you are in a very busy space if you can perhaps just <laughs> say a bit about that as well if you're comfortable with the idea of how then do you manage your time if there's such a thing as managing your time because other people corrected me and said no you do not manage your time but you manage yourself in reference to the limited amount of time that you've got so if you do not mind sharing that yeah that's true that is true that we actually are it's about managing ourselves mm -hmm. because time doesn't actually exactly. belong to us. so I've, I've actually just learned something new that it's about managing yourself but i think i want to dispel any myth you might have that i'm a master in fact uh that's something that i've had to learn uh, managing myself in the context of time is something mm -hmm. that i've had to um to teach myself sometimes life forces that on you you know like when, for example, you're single and living the single life and, you know, you have a little more wiggle room because mm -hmm. it's all about you and, you know, you don't have oh. any <laughs> obligations to anybody. But once you, you know, once you have a, a wife, a partner, um, they have certain demands of you mm -hmm. and your time and then add on to that having children, not one, but two, <laughs> now, now three for me. So, you know, and then for me, the, that, that's, that's very important. And of course, you have work obligations, you mm. have ministry obligations for some of us. Um, it's, it's, it's a big deal, but I think, again, you know, I'm gonna come back to your original question around values. Mm -hmm. um, you can only manage yourself in the context of what matters to you the most, right? So in in this age of technology where now we've got all these apps that help us to manage time i mean you go to the apple store or to google you know the google play store there's no shortage of apps mm -hmm. to help you manage your time but you can have 25000 apps on your phone but if those apps are not helping work on what you already are if they're not helping you work within your own set of principles and values, then you're never gonna really get anything out of it. So I think the first thing is figure out what matters to you most mm -hmm. um, and then allocate yourself and your time. And I, I'm using that your time thing, mm -hmm. obviously yeah, advisedly yeah. because you just taught me that my time is not my own, but you, you really have to, first of all, recognize what matters to you most mm -hmm. and then give your time to those things i'll give the example of what our you know our spiritual father both you and me says often mm -hmm. you know that when he's talking about the, the principle of generosity he often alludes to the fact that you you can get a sense of what matters to you most by looking at your bank statement right so if if all of your your rands and dollars and cents are going towards for example entertainment mm -hmm. then that is what matters you to you most. most that's what you give your time to the most so i would say any discussion about managing yourself in time as to start with the conversation about first figuring out what matters to you the most and then you take it from there so i know you asked in my context for mm -hmm. me i think um family family is very very important to me um, my family is, is is pretty much my rock um, and and they have supported me through the best and the worst of life um my friends you know making sure that i check on my friends so 
yeah, taking care of those core people in my life is very important to me, communicating with them. I manage my time around doing things like that. I manage my time also around uh, creating a body of work. I work in the creative industry, so I'm a filmmaker by training, but since then I've branched out into so many different things. I have to give time to thinking about ideas, generating concepts, uh, writing. I do a lot of writing. Um, if I can plug myself, I have a site that I have, uh, you know, <laughs> that my wife and I, you know, uh, have a business, a, a young business. Mm -hmm. We write a lot. And so I have to give time to that. So it's really about family, friends, and, and, and work. Yeah. Cool. 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 I, I like that every thing that you have spoken about thus far is not too far or rather exposes the values or the principles that you spoke about at the beginning. So we can see a common thread there around what you said around valuing people or even appreciating people's presence. So I think- uh, And, and can I, can I, yes, can I add something? <laughs> somebody watching might, you know, somebody watching might say, you are, you know, Tafadze, you're a Christian. Why, why didn't you mention God? <laughs> somebody, somebody taught me uh, a while back, you know, people like to make these categories of mm -hmm. uh, the box. Uh, people and this and then God. But actually, the way it's supposed to work is God is supposed to be in the thinking around all mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. other things. So he is actually overarching. So mm -hmm. I'm already automatically placing him in all of those groups. So I didn't want to mention God <laughs> it? and tell yeah. you my prayer, my, my Bible reading, all of that. that no, no, that's no, no, a different. I understand. And thank you for thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> I say yeah. these boxes, these boxes that we use boxes, to compartmentalize, yeah. to compartmentalize things, we even compartmentalize, we even go on to even put our God in one of them, <laughs> where they actually should feature in all of them. So exactly. thank you. I will take that. I will take that with me. Um, now, the other part that we want to touch on is around um, advice, perhaps, for someone who is around 20 years old, say, um, they're coming out of varsity. It could even be someone within the creative space, like you have mentioned. Uh, it could be someone in a totally different field altogether, let's say, the, multi the medical profession, for that matter. So we're looking for something that perhaps are thinking is an advice to that person. They're starting out, they're getting into, call it the working world. For that matter or even in their final years of their whatever they're studying there so just share a bit of the part of your life that you have experienced thus far that you think would be useful for them please <laughs> um don't waste time uh i think that's the biggest biggest advice i often look at one of my colleagues he's 21 i think or 22 and i say to him man if i was your age again the things i would do <laughs> I think one of the things that we we get fooled by, again, coming back to your question about time, is mm -hmm. we think we're in control of time, right? We keep saying things in our minds like, I'll do this tomorrow, yeah. I'll do this later. And we think we are the, the masters of time, we're in charge of time. And so when you're 20, you say, I'll do it when I'm 25, or I'll do it, I'll do it when I'm 30, or whatever. That, to me, is the biggest lie. Don't waste time. Time is super super precious um i would not want to get into giving any young person advice to do with career choice and all of that because th that journey is different for all of us but yet. one thing yeah one thing that's common to all of us is that the clock is ticking mm. and so i would really just sum it up in one sentence and say don't waste time every second counts every moment counts make the most of it do something uh, grow every day, you know, do something useful with your life. Sometimes our dreams take forever, you know, there are people that become wealthy at a very young age. Some people mm -hmm. discovered gifts and talents maybe in their 50s Much and later 60s. Though. That's okay, but as long as you are not wasting time, as long as you are faithful with your time, everything else I think will fall into place. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm reminded now because we normally set up all these buckets. Man is on the bucket list per se, and we say, oh, when I'm 25, I want to do this. When I'm 35, I would like to do this. Yep. 
But what we normally just do not focus as much on is getting ready now for the things that you want to do. So I like what yeah. you're touching on there in, uh, along the lines of not wasting time and just using and being available at every moment. Because like you said yeah. earlier on, um, around people, what you normally find that with people at any point in time, there are certain encounters that teach you things that you would not otherwise a pick up if you sit down and be like, okay, person so and so, teach me this. It's stuff yeah. that comes and flows, call it naturally if I may use that term. So I like what you're saying around not wasting time, and particularly that whole fallacy around of you are 20, you still have what 70% of your life ahead. And then Yeah, I mean, who who told you that? You know, you exactly. could go you could go when you're 21. Exactly. You know, life keeps exactly. proving to us that you know everyone can, can bank on. It. No, you can't. You can't so don't bank don't, don't, on the time. That's yeah, not don't been play that game. Mm. Mm. And perhaps to touch with that now, uh, um, along the question that we just spoke about, I think this one ties in very closely with that in a way. It's along the lines of skills um, that um, a young person would probably be best placed um, in terms of learning now and being set up for it, it's not to say you are guaranteed success in any kind of way but it's, it just sets you up better in terms of appreciating what life has to offer so what we want to ask is in your view what are this the key skills that a young person needs to cultivate for this time that we are living in <laughs> <laughs> my my bias i think is always going to be the same for me i think you're going to mm. hear me sing the same song it, it's a go, it's about navigating this world, uh, navigating people. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had a very interesting background in terms of education. I mean, I, st I, I moved around between public education and private education. So I have, I have a sense of how people think in both mm -hmm. worlds. And a lot of times you find uh, that a lot of emphasis is placed on academic excellence, which don't get me wrong, is, is great. Um, but there's something that happens when you come out of the education system that almost levels people. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost becomes less about the things that you're able to do academically. Although, again, I'm not saying those things don't come to be value. misunderstood. Yeah. But I am saying it becomes more about things like, do you know how to negotiate your way around life? Do you have tact? Do you know how to resolve conflict? Do you know how to um, manage your finances? It's these things that, we, that particularly for us, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think particularly you know, for us as African people, I think there's always been this emphasis more on you know, the books and whatever. And, with my daughters, I will push that a lot, make no mistake about mm -hmm. it. But I also want them to learn the things that actually then level all of us. You can have the top marks Bonga, in, in every subject, but if you don't know how to negotiate a work contract or to negotiate around a job description for mm -hmm. yourself or how to assert yourself in the work environment, so you can have all of these things, but if you don't have these skills that it takes to survive in the world, having a little bit of an entrepreneurial knowledge, you know, if the economy collapses, you know, if you live in a great economy, as we do here in South Africa, what happens? But I'm originally from Zimbabwe, and we saw in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. things completely collapse, collapse, you know, and everybody, whether you were highly educated or not, we all became you know, equal. It was those people that, that were able to then say, regardless of what's happened to the economy, I'm now going to become an entrepreneur. So, so I'm saying sometimes the, the traditional education system doesn't always equip us well with the skills that we really need mm -hmm. in life. And, and I say this particularly in our African context, because I'm so passionate about Africa. We need to learn these entrepreneurial things and these almost, I don't know what to call them, human life basic survival skills, skills yeah, basic, yeah, 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 basic life survival skills that, that, that are the difference between, let's take an example of, of, of um, and I don't want to get 
political no, no, no. in a way. But let's look, for example, at the the now ex-president of the, the, the US. Nobody, I mean, you may agree or disagree with his policies and you may not like his personality, mm -hmm. but we can all agree that confidence is a, is a skill <laughs> that a he doesn't lack. He, a he, he can sell you anything, you know, and he, 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 he has confidence in, in, I mean, in bucket loads. So if we can start to look at things like that, reading about how to become more confident, not all of us are, mm -hmm. you know, A-type personalities. Some of us, like me, for example, had to learn how to even have a conversation. I remember when I was a kid, my mom always used to shout at me, you know, I would have this thing where when I would speak, my voice would go super low and she would shout at me and say, raise your voice, raise your voice. Oh. Yeah, and at the time, I mean, I was like, well, what is she going on about? But she was actually just teaching me that you mm -hmm. have to, you have to show prepare, up, you have yeah. to speak up, show mm -hmm. up, exactly. So yeah, the skills that I would say young people need to learn in up over and above maybe any academic or vocational skills are actually those skills that it takes to survive in, in a very brutal world. Cool, cool. Well, thank you. And thank you for that. You're actually reminding me of um, all these non-academic skills, as you as you put them, that we've all had to learn for the most part as we have yeah. started um, now looking after our own life. By looking after, I mean yeah. not relying on your parents to send you money, and you basically exactly. have got to look after your finances. And of yeah. course, most people learn differently, but there's always a thing that is experience. Um, that always comes through and shows you actually that you really need to be confident. Otherwise, people will take advantage of you. Or even exactly. just in your own finances, you need to be someone who's quite deliberate. Otherwise, you'll be going after whatever is current at that time without paying much regard in terms of where it leaves you in the next six months, in the next year. So I like I like the things that you, you're sharing there. And thank you very much. I think we've come to pretty much the end of our conversation today. And I'd like to thank you for sharing um, your experiences um, and sharing all the principles and the values. And we've seen them come through in all the individual responses that you have given. And I'm hoping that someone who is listening is also able to pick that up as well over and above just um, me have mentioning it over what you've mentioned. And thank you very much for your time. And thank you to your family as well for allowing well, allowing seems like they're holding a key when they lock you away, but it's their time and particularly at the weekend, you're away from work. So I'd like to thank you and thank them as well for allowing you to come through. So thank you so much, TJ. You're welcome. Thank you for, for having me and, and all the best.